So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Mariana kindly and graciously introduced us, uh, my name is James Howell. Uh, I am joined by my colleague here, Shoab Mozamel. Uh, unfortunately, Anand Karat, who was initially scheduled for um, this presentation, is not available uh, due to um, something that just came up last minute. Um, so there's going to be a slight shift in this talk, but we are going to be able to go over all the same concepts uh, with my esteemed colleague, uh, Shoab Mozamel. Thank so you, James. So today we're going to be talking. Yeah. Yeah, go <laughs> and, ahead. Sorry, James. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about um, Vreda and our, um, our midterm and exam uh, high stakes um, solutions for digital assessments. So we have three offerings here. Um, Breda is a tech ed company from Canada. For those of you who don't know, uh, we are in 63 of 82 publicly funded colleges and universities across uh, the country here. And we're actually in um, five universities, um, uh, as well as faculties of education uh, across um, the United Kingdom. And we're also in uh, a national organization. Uh, geez, I always forget because it's a six letter, letter acronym, I have trouble forgetting it, but it's a NASBIT, which some of you might be familiar with. Uh, it's a, a provider network association that uh, provides qualified teacher status um, to candidates uh, seeking to become teachers in the United Kingdom. And they do use uh, our products for uh, the numeracy piece there. So today, uh, just we're not gonna go through each of them in depth, but we are gonna introduce the solutions to you. Uh, we have our Elevate My Math platform, Intro Math, as well as um, the OCMT. I'm just going to pass it off to uh, show it from here. Thank you so much, James. Uh, NASBIT is National Association for School-Based Teacher Trainers, right, James? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Thank perfect. You. So thanks a lot, James. <laughs> no problem. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this presentation. Uh, just to give you a roadmap of what to expect over the next 30 minutes, we'll give you a brief overview of our history get into our product demo, and then we'll delve a little further into our intro math platform and our background. So uh, just sit back and relax as we take you through our journey. So who are we? Some may call us dreamers. Others may look at us as go-getters. However, we like to define ourselves by our vision, which is a world where everyone enjoys math. Starting from our humble beginnings back in 2010, a dream and a vision was brought to fruition and Vreda was born. From our inception up until now, there's one thing that has remained a constant, and that's our commitment to student success and instructor satisfaction by working closely with instructors and creating a hybrid model and a personalized learning approach for students which helps create, which helps eliminate math anxiety and fear. And with one of a kind content, which breaks down abstract mathematical concepts into their practical applications and presenting them through an intuitive and engaging experience, we have truly evolved over the years, keeping one thing in mind, student and instructor. As our aspirations grew, so did our reach and product offerings as we introduced IntraMath, our platform catering to post-secondary institutions and houses resources ranging from business math all the way up to our OER offerings and technical mathematics calculus and many more. Accompanying these resources are interactive and engaging lessons, customizable labs built in with a unique test bank, which includes thousands of algor algorithmically generated questions and a dashboard to view individual or class performance. James. Thank you, Sean. And as I was mentioning earlier, um, I actually work very closely with the provider networks of NASBIT. Uh, they all have their individual names, so that's also why I don't see uh, this acronym. Um, but for this, we actually use um, uh, our Elevate My Math platform. Uh, we've been engaged with the provider network 19, and we've seen a huge increase um, both at the uh, uh, grassroots level for early years, as well as assessment only uh, apprenticeships and, um, uh, you know, PCGS or PCGE with qualified teacher status um, candidates and trainees who do require that maths test uh, for certification. In addition to the UK, uh, we've also reached into large scale assessments in uh, other parts of Europe. Um, for the Ministry of France, we've worked with them to produce um, a national assessment that's actually offline uh, 
uh, compatible. This is for all primary age students in grade three. Um, it works like clockwork every year. Um, they hop on uh, to our system to take a maths as well as uh, a literacy assessment. Um, the unique thing about this is it is available in offline as well as online where the um, uh, the test or, or invigilator would actually download a preset number of tests from the system and then administer it that way. In addition to France, we've also worked uh, with the Ministry of Education in Luxembourg to build an end-to-end -end, uh, assessment for learning platform that begins at grade three, um, or sorry, we call it grade three, um, uh, and I presume in the UK it is too, but the Luxembourgish name is slightly different. They go by uh, a, cycle, a system where they call them cycles. Um, but basically from uh, the age of uh, seven up to up to adolescence, so two years before graduating uh, into secondary. So the equivalent in Ontario or Canada terms would be grade three to grade 10, okay? Now, the platform actually stays with them and follows the same principles of learning that we apply to everything. Um, you know, the instructor teaches, uh, we reinforce with engagement pieces and activities, and then you assess them to the level of mastery required. Um, this actually stays with them in Luxembourg uh, and it's actually something that we built that um, translates seamlessly into the four different languages that they use in that country. Part of our ethos as well to designing a product and, and creating something that's meaningful um, is to put together this little equation. We want happy students and teachers. Um, so to do that, we make something that's affordable, flexible, as well as engaging. Uh, and we break down everything into those pieces and look at it to make sure it's geared towards student success and it meets um, you know, our clients' uh, uh, expectations as well as we, we work to, to, to make those students happy and uh, more numerous. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, give you guys a, a brief tour of what it is um, and what intro math can do. Uh, so just bear with me. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna go into one of the courses um, it, and you can see here on this page that you can host many different courses. Uh, I'm actually gonna open up this one here and just talk over that in a bit. But while that loads, I'll quickly show you the structure. Um, so this is not prescriptive at all. It's a sample course. Uh, it's not what a real course would look like. Um, but just imagine, you know, these as weeks or chapters. Uh, we have a system of labels here to organize it by then open and close dates um, for you to run your course, your pre-assessments, and high stakes exams as well. So what I'm going to do quickly is just show you what one of the learning uh, components looks like. And then I'll show you what a lab looks like and how to create um, a lab into one of those high stakes exams with some of the back end settings we have. So first, I'm just going to give a brief moment to look at what the interactive learning components uh, look like in our system. And forgive me, I want to restart it. Stack something high enough? Make sure the audio is coming through correctly. Hang on one second. And I think we should be good now. If you've ever stacked something high enough, you know that when it starts to lean, it's about to fall. Sure, there are a few exceptions, but architects always do their best to make sure that buildings stand up straight. To do this, they need to make sure that the building makes a 90 degree angle with the ground. In other words, the wall needs to be at a right angle with the ground. The Leaning Tower of Pisa, for example, is at an 86 degree with the ground and it keeps leaning more and more every year. Now, 86 degrees might seem pretty close to 90 degrees, but small differences like these can be catastrophic. Which of these is not a right angle? So uh, very quickly here, this is one of the engagement points of the uh, interactive lessons. Um, based on the student's response here, I like to think of it, uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, Bandersnatch or those uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books, based on the student's response here, it'll either um, progress them through more quickly or reinforce them with a hint uh, to get them through to completion. I don't have time to go through all the different sequences, so I'm going to pass this on purpose. Uh, but it's these are the adaptive pieces that support learners and really um, provide that personalized learning experience, okay? 
When you compare it to a perfect right angle, you'll see that one of the angles is a bit smaller than 90 degrees. How could you have known this without pulling out a protractor? It wasn't that easy to measure this way back in ancient times either. They had to come up with clever techniques to calculate right angle triangles. Here's one of the cleverest ideas, which went on to become one of the first mathematical equations in history, the Pythagorean theorem. It works like this. Take four identical right angle triangles. We'll use these tiles. Each tile is six by eight, and the remaining side is unknown, so let's call it C. If we move these tiles into the shape of a square, you'll notice the space in the middle makes another little square. Let's add another tile in the middle to fill in this gap. So here's one shape we can make. But you can take all of these tiles and set them up like this, so that we actually have two squares, where the bigger square is 8 by 8, and the smaller square is 6 by 6. Since we used all of the same tiles for both of these patterns, we know that the area for both must be the same. So 8 squared plus 6 squared must equal C squared. Well, 8 squared is 64, and 6 squared is 36, so adding those together, C squared must be 100. What number squared is 100? 10. And that's how Pythagoras, back in ancient Greece thousands of years ago, was able to calculate any right angle triangle. Just by knowing any two sides of the triangle, he could figure out the third. So this is the Pythagorean theorem brings all the sides and, and the lesson will continue forward because I got um, those first engagement pieces correct. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite lessons. I didn't know, um, I, I knew a lot about Pythagoras and Pythagorean theorem, uh, you know, as well as the stones and the cave and, and setting that up. But, you know, just that visualization of opening it up the other way was not something uh, I was ever taught um, in, in my maths lessons. <clears throat> However, I really did like that. So what <clears throat> I wanted to quickly just demonstrate with that is the interna interactive learning components and modules that we'll put in front of our tests. Now, these are meant to reinforce the concepts you teach in your class um, and, and really provide students that, uh, that other understanding and, and, you know, basically clicking through and working through things in different ways to give them information uh, for different learners. Yeah. Now, um, after, you know, your lesson sets and your lectures, any Q&A you have with the students will typically include a lab. Um, this will just be, you know, a very, very standard um, homework management system where you're going through questions related in those prerequisite topics that we just saw. And I'm going to show you how the interface looks with no settings changed. And then we're going to quickly build um, one of the exams and go through some of the special settings there. Okay. Which for me is slowing down, unfortunately. Technology always does that. Let me try turning my uh, camera off, James. With the condensed part of this form, I may as well just actually build a test. That might be quicker. So here from our uh, instructor uh, interface, you'll have a one-to-one -one correspondence with that uh, resource list. And if you wanted to create um, a new test or exam, uh, you would just create a lab, okay? Name it accordingly. You can call it review for exam if you want to build a prerequisite one. A lot of things that we're doing in today's digital environment is building something um, that's a mock exam <clears throat> uh, for the students. Okay, and that's not working either. But um, with a mock exam, you'll essentially uh, mimic the same settings that are available, um, but just give them unlimited attempts and give them immediate feedback by just choosing variants of the questions. Uh, forgive me, it looks like I'm not having enough bandwidth for this. Um, 
what I can do, sure. Do we have slides that go over some of these things? Um, let me check, James. I think we do. I think we do, yeah, because we have some intro math slides after this. So we I can apologize. just go over those. Yeah. And what I can do is if anyone wants access or a sample, I can always give them to it on your local. I think with just the amount of people here, um, it's not uh, it's not rendering properly uh, with my wireless at home internet. But uh, from here, I'll just uh, maybe go over some of what you can do in our system. So uh, we have um, different response types for questions to pick from. As Shoaib mentioned, we have over 13,000 uh, algorithmic questions uh, with variants within themselves, as well as different performance expectations to choose from. So we have you know, the classic um, you know, select, multi-select, so your, your multiple choice questions. Uh, we also have constructive response type questions. Technology enhanced, uh, multi-step or combined questions that are assessing different ways um, and you know, expecting the student to carry one calculation into the subsequent one. Uh, and we also have tabular um, graphical questions as well. And one of the really, really neat things we've developed for um, our learning as well as testing is an algebraic logbook. Okay, Now here it's actually showing you financial calculator uh, settings, but it does have the ability to give the student a full equation editor and write in math typeset. We initially designed this for um, our pre-calculus and calculus students so they could write in um, uh, functional notation and work through things that way before they submitted the answer. And the really cool thing is we're seeing uh, more and more of this being used for high stakes exams where you know you might want a student um, typically to write something and then take a picture, submit it on Dropbox, Instead, the tool is right there next to them while they're in the assessment. They can't leave the assessment. They're writing their submission there. And we build test questions that will say record you know, all the steps and sequences you can. They can write in plain text. Uh, they have an equation editor and they have tables to build and submit right in the platform. And it's very intuitive and super easy to use. And you can see each and every um, uh, submission by the student. Now, one of the other cool things you're seeing here is it says validation inactive. That's because this is from a test. Um, but the algebra tool does have a validator where um, if you wanted to set it up in practice mode, where one line's logical congruence to the next will be indicated to the student as they're working through the problems. Uh, obviously, for a test, you'd want to turn that off. But it does allow them to simplify quadratics and higher level maths um, in, in, a, in a personalized environment. Uh, just quickly, some of the um, different dashboards and analytics you would have here. Um, this is basically looking at your assessments and what you want to see typically is your um, assessments coming in to the program before they go out uh, will have an increase. And you can see here in one topic in the fourth module, a significant increase, uh, which is good to see. This is actually aggregate data for 100 and 78 students I'm seeing. No, 175. Sorry, it's a bit smaller on my, my laptop here. But the, these dashboards actually let you see the progress in real time. Um, all of these little colors, uh, I'm not going to actually show you these because if I clicked on it, it would reveal students' names, but they are clickable and it would show you each and every attempt where they got it, uh, time on task, the average completion per assessment item, um, as well as the success rate of that assessment item. Uh, in the platform. So you have a bird's eye view and you just click and click and you go down into further and further minutia. Um, another thing we do here uh, is we'll build um, optional conditional assessments. So what you're looking at here um, is actually something from our Elevate My Math platform where they'll go through uh, different assessments and based on the score achieved in there, they'll get access to the proficiency assessment or not. Um, and then we also have things like a challenge test. Um, so if they did fail something or they didn't um, get to the appropriate level of uh, mastery, they would have something else that would open up to them alternatively. So um, that's the difference between, you know, they're both after measurement here, but one student might get this where another one will get um, something else. Now, all of our assessments have algorithmic shuffling. Uh, we have bucketed questions and we have the ability, uh, it's unfortunate I didn't get show you this to um, you know set up question uh, required question submission where the student could not um, move on to the next question until they submitted that one um, but what's cool about that is uh, you know 
it does always give the student the same type of performance expectation and performance area in the test design. So when you're using that modify labs and exam tool, um, you set the parameters for where it's going to shuffle and, and you select from the test bank what variants are, are potentially there to appear to make sure the performance expectations are equal. Uh, you wouldn't want one uh, student to get a question that calculates volume in grams, which shouldn't be the case. And then another student who gets it um, calculating in milliliters. So um, we do have a really cool mapping structure behind that. Um, <clears throat> so I, I just want to quickly talk about the uh, value proposition uh, as we come up to the close here. Um, Intro math, uh, it does help overall success. Uh, we do have research showing that it helps specifically in first semester retention rates. Um, it's designed to be affordable and flexible. Uh, it gives that you know, technology piece to the Institute, whether it's a university or a college um, or a polytechnic, uh, you know, to increase that student awareness and perception that they are living in the current world uh, with technology. And it also potentially attracts more students uh, to not only the Institute, but also mathematics. Um, we get lots of positive feedback from students saying, hey, I was you know, poor at math or I never thought doing this, but now that I'm using something like this, uh, I wanna pursue it further. Um, one of my colleagues I presented with yesterday, or sorry, two days ago, Frank, uh, apologies, apologies there. Uh, he had lots of student testimonials at his university, the University of Derby. Uh, the recorded session is there as well. I encourage you to go back and look at it in case you missed it. And I just wanted to quickly touch base on our, um, our, our research here. Uh, so there was uh, a, a provincial-wide initiative with all 24 colleges here, as well as the Ministries of Education. This is where we built out most of our test banks and assessment items, as well as the technology to do this. Um, and from Ontario, we've now gone on abroad, um, but it was a 10 year research project with psychometric analysis on all of the items. And it was uh, quite comprehensive and uh, quite lengthy. I did have links to that and I will post them as well um, on underneath the questions following this. So you can download some of the research because I know you guys are interested in it. And I wanted to quickly mention, because this came up my other one, um, my other presentation the other day, all of our systems are interoperable with common VLEs, uh, as well as student information systems. Uh, so things like uh, Oracle, PeopleSoft, Banner, uh, SAP, um, sometimes our, our assessments are actually administered before the student ever gets to um, the college, so they wouldn't be in a VLE. Um, so we have integrations for that as well. It just depends on the application. Um, we also have a firm and strong commitment to the WCAGS uh, 2.0 uh, standards. Everything we build is keeping in mind um, as much compliance we can. And um, you know everything we do, like you saw with those lessons, uh, tries to engage the student. Um, and we do have alternative formats for all of that. Um, I'm not gonna claim we have each and every accessibility requirement there, but we try to keep as compliant as possible and build alternative formats uh, as and where required. Uh, show up, I'm losing my voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, James. Thank you so much. So over the years, we've won many awards, including the Brandon Hall Group Excellence Award, which recognizes organizations who have shown excellence and achieved measurable results through many facets of technology. We've also been recognized internationally for our work, as most recently we've won the best use of formative assessment out of the e-assessment awards. That was for intro math, yeah. Yeah. And for intro math, exactly, yes. We are truly global with over 70 staff members spanning across North America, all the way to Europe and Asia. Greta never sleeps as we work tirelessly to ensure that we are there for both students and instructors whenever they need us. English is also not our only forte as we've built custom resources in three other languages, French, German, and Portuguese. So who are we? We'll leave that up for others' interpretation. However, our vision is a world where everyone enjoys math, and our goal is to bring that statement to fruition one student at a time. Thank you. Thank you so much to our speakers. That was wonderful. So do we have any questions for our speakers? Actually, I have a quick question if no one else does. I'll just give a second to see if anyone else chimes in. No. 
Okay, so my question is, I found it really interesting that um, that portal that allowed students to type math that kind of made it really easy for them to type their, uh, their written work directly into the system. Um, how have the students responded to that? Um, if they're taking a high stakes assessment, um, I would imagine that it would be, you know, easier for them to get a piece of paper and write out their scratch work and go back and forth and, and think through. And the fact that they do not submit that written work, but yet then have to retype it um, into the platform, have they pushed back against that? What, what has it been like in, you know, in use? Yeah, so that's a great question, uh, Mariana. Actually, when we first developed the tool, it wasn't for testing purposes. It was for the students to work through uh, stuff algebraically in, you know, on a computer. So we designed it pre-pandemic, and it was already in use in most of the courseware throughout. So your weekly labs, um, your biweekly assignments, your practice assignments all had that, and students were quite comfortable using it in those applications. So for that group, when testing began, it was very intuitive and almost seamless. There was no pushback. Where we saw pushback um, was actually in um, pre-calculus courses. So something like I was showing you a, a math for trades uh, and apprenticeship um, or something, you know, uh, dosage calculations and health sciences. Those, those groups weren't really using our algebra tool. And when the logbook came to uh, testing environments, they weren't familiar with it. Also, the faculty weren't. So we had to um, quickly adapt and uh, provide training. And one of the things I did mention there, we want to create um, mock exams that have the same conditions and same settings, as well as introduce something like technology to students as early as possible so that when they're in the high stakes environment, it's not unfamiliar and new to them. Mm -hmm. So truly, we recommend having something like that logbook if you're going to use it. Uh, available throughout the entire course. So they're not, um, basically, so they're familiar with it. The The chart tool and table tool in there uh, is like an exact Excel simulation as well. So they're going to be familiar with these types of technology and using them in different places. But that's a great question. Yeah. And it helps answer it. Sorry. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's very smart that you ha give them the, the chance to become comfortable with it before, you know, coming to a high stakes environment. So that Makes total sense. Thank you so much. Um, let's thank our speakers again. That was really wonderful. Any questions that we have about this, please put them in the Moodle and the speakers can respond there. We can continue the discussion. Um, the link was put in the chat. Um, 